alongside Teddy Atlas. Good evening and welcome to the MGM Grand here on the Vegas Strip in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada for our main event of the evening. 12 rounds, middleweight action between marvelous Marvin Hagler and Carlos Monzon. Marvin Hagler is now making his way to the ring, and you can see how focused he is for the task at hand. Carlos Monzon's approaching the ring now, and this ring walk can tell you so much. Look at the focus on his face. Gentlemen, protect yourself at all times. Let's touch him up. When you get a fight like this that everybody's been talking about, it's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. How do you define consistency when you describe the fact that among this matchup you're looking for guys to be more consistent? Which guy's going to be more consistent? How do you define that? Just in one area. When they get inside, for example, Joe, every once in a while somebody takes a little bit of a break. Yeah, there's working, but all of a sudden one guy's arm goes behind the other guy. I'm looking to see who keeps both hands free. See, he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Excellent counter punch by Hagler. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Takes one, but gives one. Good work by Carlos Monzon. <laughs> Halfway through this round here. It was April of 1985 when Marvin Hagler was able to TKO Tommy Hearns in one of the great action fights in the history of the sport. In many ways, did that encapsulate his entire career, that one shining moment? Well, in a lot of ways it did because he was a fighter who never felt appreciated. You know, he understood where he came from. He went out there and took chances, he felt, with everybody. All these tough Philadelphia fighters that nobody else would fight. He fought everybody to work his way up. And he looked at other fighters, whether it was Hearns or Sugar Ray Leonard, and these guys he felt were navigated. He felt that they were given things in a certain way on a silver platter and he had to earn everything the hard way and finding a guy of the notoriety of the talent of Tommy Hearns to him his moment had come good block there by Hagler oh he got caught by that right hand he never saw it coming he may be looking to clinch here to throw some punches here Able to block that away. It was targeted for his head. Last 10 seconds of this first round. Well-placed counter punch by Hagler. Keep the pressure on. Keep on. Don't need to get excited. Doing fine. You need to throw more punches. That will keep him away. You're doing fine. He's just beating you to the punch. That's all. So here we are, a new round underway. And in that last round, 
He got tagged. He got hit pretty hard, Teddy. Yeah, he did. He got caught. Now, the first thing is, we all know he got caught, but why did he get caught? He has to be able to decipher that in his head. He has to be able to have the answer to that so it doesn't happen again. Gets rid of that. It was intended for his head. Here's one for you now, he says. Right back with the left hand. Locks the headshot. A stinging counterpunch after some fine defense by Hagler. How about a return to sender with the left hand? by drawing in his opponent and then landing the counterpunch by Hagler. That's great stuff. He fires one right back after taking one. Gotta love the work by Carlos Monzon. We always see great athletes week in and week out, but Teddy, what sport do you think can produce the best boxers? Well, believe it or not, basketball, everybody would say football. We saw two tall Jones. He got demolished by little guys. We saw Gastineau. He got demolished. We saw Highsmith. He got demolished. A lot of football players haven't done well. But basketball players, they have the physical skill sets where they can make a pretty good fighter. Of course, you have to get a guy that mentally is adjusted. Place counter. There it is! Carlos Monzon's almost out of it there. He was stunned. And a big right hand by Hagler. So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. Final 10 seconds of round number two. Marvin Hagler, of course, associated with Brockton, Massachusetts, best known as the home of the Brockton blockbuster, Rocky Marciano. But he was actually born in Newark, New Jersey, back in 1954. Focus on the fight. We'll take care of this well. Get on that. Get on that. Back to fight action as a new round is underway. Of course, in that last round, it was fairly one-sided. He was hit pretty hard, and now he has to overcome that here. Yeah, you don't have to be Notre Dame to know that. I mean, everybody saw, you know, he got staggered, his knees buckled, did a little dance there. But what you have to really know now is know why you got hit and correct that immediately. Solid counter punch by Hagler. Blocked by Hagler. Comes right back at him with a left hand.
Teddy, what was it about Marvin Hagler that so many people were attracted to? What was it about just this, this iron ripped, chiseled warrior that everybody felt there's a connection for me there? I think it was all those things you just alluded to in the shaved head. You know, because he really represented everything that you kind of pictured if you closed your eyes and you thought of a prototypical fighter that you'd like to watch that you'd like to see you know a real <laughs> symbol of what fighting's about and on top of that he not only went after you he not only looked like the product he was the product he could box he could do everything that right hand at all he may want to tie up all right punch it up a headshot block final 10 seconds Carlos Monzon's cheek is cut you can see it's opening up now boy that could be a factor later on End of the round here, a round that saw a lot of action. The kind of round that fans pay to be here to see. Well, these are TV-friendly fighters, and we figured that coming in. So here we are, a new round underway, and in that last round, he got tagged. He got hit pretty hard, Teddy. Yeah, he did. He got caught. Now, the first thing is, we all know he got caught, but why did he get caught? He has to be able to decipher that in his head. He has to be able to have the answer to that so it doesn't happen again. Wow, look at that. Trading shots. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Carlos Monzon. Nice block that time. It was intended to the head. Oh, and they decide to trade there. Carlos Monzon's Cox is not going to the body at all. He'd be so well served to do it, though, Teddy. Yeah, but his opponent doesn't want him to. So, you know, he doesn't want to go against what his opponent doesn't want him to do because his opponent would love him to keep throwing to the head because, you know, he can see those coming. He can move and avoid them. Body shots, you know, your head moves, but your body doesn't. Locks that belt line well. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. <laughs> Able to get away from that headshot with the block. away from those headshots with his defense up top here's one for you now he says right back with the left hand how about a return to sender with the left hand Very nice defensive guard there. Medium. 
get hurt. Fourth round now with his last 10 seconds. We come to the end of the round. A round that I'm having a tough time trying to think about who won. I can only imagine what the judges are thinking about. Teddy, if there's one thing you look for in a round like that and say, okay, I'm going to give it to this guy over this guy, what is it? Well, the first thing is, if I'm a judge, I take a little notepad and I make a little mark down, blue or red corner, what he did early. Because sometimes a judge has a tendency to forget what was done early and only go with what went late. Okay. Throw, or punch, jab, jab, oh. Back underway here to live fight action. Tough fight to score. Very, very even, closely contested bout throughout. You get the sense that we have a fight in front of us that's going to be fought this way right to the bitter end, go the full distance, and be one of those fights that's greatly debated over. Well, you hope they get it the right way, but it's very important that they don't act like fans. They being judges, where they're not just watching leather be thrown from all angles, they're watching real closely to see who's landing the punches, who's landing the most clean, effective blows. by Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Teddy, there are opportunities that are here for him, aren't there? Yeah, counterpunch opportunities because he's got an opponent who's walking in a little bit. Now he has a chance to start to chuck something back at him a little. And his cheek has been split wide open. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. Minute and a half to go. You get the sense that they know no other way how to fight. They are going at it, back and forth, toe to toe, punch for punch. Blocks the headshot. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. And this round comes to an end. It is a round that was highly entertaining. These guys really put forth quite an effort. Well, they both have high engines. They have motors that never stop going. And we are back underway, another round in a fight that's been very entertaining, but I wouldn't want to be a judge. This is one of those fights that could go either way. See, the defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs.
Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. Carlos Monzon sitting here wondering why he's getting hit so much. How about this? You're not moving your head at all. Well, how about don't wonder about it? You weren't taught that probably in the gym. You didn't work on that in the gym. Well, it's not going to come to you suddenly when you're in the arena. A sound combination by Hagler. Great movement to get away from those punches. Teddy, this is one of those moments where you just wish you could pick up the phone and call up the world and say, tune in. Everybody should be watching this, right? I have a cell phone. I might do that right now. <laughs> Start dialing. Reaching the halfway point of round number six. That right hand is becoming a crutch. He can just lean on it now. Carlos Monzon starting to bleed from the nose. Nice block. Oh, that's good stuff. Firing right back with one of his own. Good work by marvelous Marvin Hagler. Good defensive skill. He returns the favor with a right hand of his own. Showing you some defense there with the block. So important. Who can make the changes now as we're halfway through this scheduled 12 rounder? Carlos Monzon's now in a spot that many fighters have faced numerous times, and that is how do you deal with seeing your own blood and knowing that you have incurred some serious damage? Look at that cut around the eye. No, for a fighter to be able to move to the top, he's got to be tested in a lot of areas. Sometimes the test comes when he's hurt. He's hit on the chin. He's dropped for the first time. Sometimes the test comes when you drop the other guy and he gets up and he comes at you. And sometimes the test comes in the form of a cut. When you see your first blood, when you see it, that it's your blood, how do you behave? We're going to find out right now. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Carlos Monzo. Nice right after catching one by marvelous Marvin Hagler. So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. Oh, that's good stuff. Firing right back with one of his own. Good work by Carlos Monzon. A 
able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. Throws a counter punch there. And yet another jab lands. One minute to go in a round that feels like an all-time classic. Punch for punch, they're meeting each other. That's great stuff. He fires one right back after taking one. Gotta love the work by Carlos Monzon. Locks away that headshot. Great fight. I mean, just a great fight. Both guys giving their all back and forth. It doesn't get much better. As we come to the end of the round, Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, that's one of those rounds where I wonder what were the judges looking for because it's tough to kind of draw a line between those two fighters. Yeah, very close, but one of those rounds where you could steal it. You did a little bit more in those last 30, 20 seconds. Maybe that's the impression the judges are left with. Listen, you need to move your head more, side to side, okay? I want to see that head move more. Don't let it breathe. Teddy, what do you think here as we start this round? I mean, you watch what he did in that last round, and you got to think that he can get himself back into this fight. Well, that's how he's got to be thinking it. That's kind of what he's made up of. He's not a front runner. You know, he's not a fast starter anyway. He's the kind of guy that his real strength is to be able to weigh you down, to have a great resolve, and to be able to chip away, chip away. He's chipping. <laughs> Got him with a left hand. Showing you some defense there with the block. Oh, Carlos Monzon's legs look shaky. He was hurt. And there's a clinch after clearly being damaged. was damaged moments ago, but now he's got his feet back underneath him. Devastating blow by Hagler. Hagler's putting together punch stats tonight that fall right in line with what his strategy is. Outside fighter, throwing lots of jabs, landing lots of jabs. Well, what it is is the jab is the table setter, and the jab tonight has set up the table where he's been able to eat whatever he's wanted. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. Good looking counter punch. Keep it going. In and out, in and out. One minute to go in this round. Neither man has decided to slow down at all. Oh boy, what a round. Blocks the headshot. No doubt about it, he's hurt. He could go down, but he's doing the right thing here. Just getting the heck away. Yeah, he's staying away right now. But what he's going to have to do now is deal with his opponent when he starts coming close. He's going to have to find a way for offense. Keep him honest a little. Staying away from 
those headshots with his defense up top. End of the round there. He was able to stun his opponent. Teddy, when you're training a guy that's coming off a round where he just got to his man, what do you do? Do you say, hey, I saw that, and here's how you did it? How do you approach that? Well, you want to make sure you remind them exactly what you're talking about, how he set it up. Don't think about just the big punch that landed. Remember how you got to that point. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll take care of the cut. It's not a small cut. Nothing to worry about. Let's get on that swelling. I'll press on that. The action starts up again, but it's only favored one man. Hard to see this fight going the distance based on what we've witnessed so far. Good job protecting himself. Carlos Monzon's offense has completely gone away here, it seems. He was hurt earlier, and now all he's doing is worried about what could be coming to get him again. Yeah, he was on the highway earlier going about 90, and now all of a sudden he's taking those back roads going about 20. How long until the police catch up to him or his opponent? Oh! He is not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. Come on, guys, keep it hard. Punch it up. Come on, punch it up. That is it. This fight is over. Marvin Hagler's your winner by TKO. The ref has seen it up. Your winner. Marvin Hagler is your winner by TKO. You know, Joe, I like a night where you see a guy testing. Don't survive, others never rise from the ashes. Watching ass fall and observing the